Dear friends, welcome again to the lecture of Riemann integral. We are studying properties of uh, Riemann integral. Uh, in earlier lectures, we have studied uh, three properties. Now, in this uh, lecture, we shall study further more properties. First, we shall study this lemma. I have written the statement of the lemma. If f is Riemann integrable function on the closed bounded interval a b and if f of x is greater than or equal to 0 that is non negative and uh, almost everywhere everywhere uh, in the interval a to b that is a is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to b then integral of uh, f is greater than or equal to 0. So, this is uh, the property if f is uh, greater than or equal to 0 integral of f is also greater than or equal to 0 that we have to prove. Now, we shall prove it. See f is uh, given as a Riemann integrable function and we shall consider a subdivision sigma we have also given f of x is greater than or equal to 0. So, we have f of x is greater than or equal to 0 x belongs to the closed interval a b. Let sigma be a subdivision. We shall consider sigma be a subdivision of uh, closed interval a b and let uh, further the component intervals of let the component intervals of sigma b Uh, suppose these are i 1 up to i n these are the component intervals of sigma and uh, we have because f of x is greater than or equal to 0 since f of x is greater than or equal to 0 we have maximum value of f maximum value of f on each interval i k is greater than or equal to 0. So, we have divided the uh, uh, subdivision sigma is taken for this uh, interval a to b and these are the component intervals say i 1 etcetera up to i n these are the component intervals. And uh, we have the, the maximum value of f on each interval is greater than or equal to 0 because f is greater than or equal to 0 for all values of x in the interval a to b and thus we have maximum value of f on i k is greater than or equal to 0 k will have the values 1 to n from i 1 to i n and therefore, the upper sum therefore, the upper sum of f on this subdivision sigma will also be greater than or equal to 0 because upper sum is defined in terms of maximum value of fun function in each interval adding into uh, we have upper sum as maximum value of f on i k into length of i k and sum of this from 1 k taking value 1 to n and because this is greater than or equal to 0 the upper sum is also greater than or equal to 0 and uh, the taking now we take the glb of this over all subdivisions sigma taking greatest lower bound over all such subdivision sigma we have uh, that means we are taking the greatest lower bound on sigma of upper sum of f on sigma and that will also be greater than or equal to 0 because each upper sum is greater than or equal to 0 the greatest lower bound of uh, upper sum will also be greater than or equal to 0. But what is this? This is by definition is the upper integral that is integral a to b of f upper integral of f and that is greater than or equal to 0. But because f is Riemann integrable its uh, upper integral is same as the integral of f and that is greater than or equal to 0. So, this is what we wanted to prove since f is Riemann integrable Riemann integrable over the closed bounded interval a b and this proves the result. So, the lemma is simple if f is greater than or equal to 0 integral of f is also greater than or equal to 0. Now, we shall use this lemma to prove a uh, corollary. So, I shall write the statement of the corollary as two corollaries we shall prove first corollary is uh, let 
f is Riemann integrable. Let f is Riemann integrable and another function g is also Riemann integrable. f and g are two Riemann integrable functions. If f of x is less than or equal to g of x almost everywhere almost see everywhere in this interval a to b then then integral of f from a to b is less than or equal to integral of g from a to b so this is the corollary and uh, we use uh, make use of this uh, lemma to prove this corollary the lemma says that if f is greater than or equal to 0 then integral of f is greater than or equal to 0 now the proof for this see f is uh, riemann integrable and g is riemann integrable so and uh, f is uh, less than or equal to g so therefore we have minus f is riemann integrable and g minus f is also riemann integrable since f and g are Riemann integrable. So, we have minus f and g minus f are Riemann integrable. So, how this is? If a uh, uh, f and g are given as Riemann integrable. So, minus f is Riemann integrable that is theorem 4. If uh, f is Riemann integrable lambda f is Riemann integrable lambda can be taken as minus 1 and how to get this result g minus f by uh, earlier theorem theorem number 5. If f and g are Riemann integrable their sum is Riemann integrable and therefore, this sum can be taken as g plus of negative f. So, this follows by theorem by theorem 4 and so, this is the result that we can write and now g minus f are Riemann integrable we have written. We have given as f of x is less than or equal to g of x. So, that can be written as we have g of x is greater than or equal to f of x. See f is less than or equal to g means g is greater than or equal to f of x and therefore, or g of x minus f of x will be greater than or equal to 0 taking this term on this side g of x minus f of x is greater than or equal to 0 and this is true the same uh, the same statement we have written here f of x is less than or equal to g of x means g of x minus f of x is greater than or equal to 0 almost everywhere almost everywhere in the closed interval a b and thus uh, that means g minus f is greater than or equal to 0. So, by above lemma and by the lemma we get we have the integral of this integral of this is greater than or equal to 0 that is integral of g minus f is greater than or equal to 0 because g minus f is greater than or equal to 0 what is the lemma that we have proved if f is greater than or equal to 0 this implies integral of f from a to b is greater than or equal to 0. So, we have to write the limits from a to b the interval is a to b. So, integral of a to b g minus f is greater than or equal to 0 or that can be written as integral a to b. So, g minus f can be written as g plus of minus f and this is greater than or equal to 0 this can be expressed in the form of sum and that is uh, that can be written as integral a to b we can now use uh, the theorem 5. So, this is uh, first function plus second function it, it can be separated as integral of first function that is g plus integral of second function that is minus f and this is greater than or equal to 0 this is by theorem theorem 5 and now that is this is integral a to b of g and integral a to b of uh, negative f is 
negative of integral a to b of f. This minus 1 can be written outside that is theorem 4 integral of lambda f is equal to lambda times integral of f and that is minus integral of a to b of f is greater than or equal to 0. This is by theorem 4. Earlier properties we are using or finally that becomes integral a to b of g integral of g that is integral of uh, g is greater than or equal to shifting this term on that side is greater than or equal to integral of f or that means integral of uh, f is less than or equal to integral of g. So, this is what we wanted to prove and this proves the result. This proves the corollary. Now, we shall write one more corollary that is let f is Riemann integrable if f is Riemann integrable then uh, the absolute value of f is also Riemann integrable. Absolute value of f is Riemann integrable and integral of uh, absolute value of the integral is less than or equal to integral of the absolute value of f. See the result. If f is Riemann integrable, then absolute value of f is Riemann integrable over the interval, same interval a to b, and we have the integral absolute value of the integral. First integral is taken, evaluated, and then its absolute value is taken. That is the meaning of the left side. And what is the right side? We have to take the integration of absolute value of f. Absolute value of f is obtained first, and then it is integrated. So, we shall consider the proof for this second corollary. Now, the first part is simple. See, uh, we have uh, absolute value of f is continuous wherever f is continuous. And therefore, if f is uh, Riemann integrable, absolute value of f is Riemann integrable. So, since absolute value of f is continuous. wherever f is continuous. Therefore, therefore, absolute value of f is Riemann integrable if f is Riemann integrable. So, f is Riemann integrable therefore, absolute value of f is also Riemann integrable. Now, we have Uh, see the uh, function f of x, f of x is less than or equal to absolute value of f of x or which can be written as absolute value of f of x like this. So, this is the same as this one and uh, for all, so this result here holds for all, for all x in the interval a to b. See, f of x is always less than or equal to absolute value of f of x. That is by definition of absolute value function. Because, see, uh, we have the absolute value of uh, x, how the absolute value is defined, it has two values. Absolute value of x is either x when x is greater than or equal to 0 or negative x if x is less than 0. And in any case, the value of this, this value is less than or equal to uh, absolute value of x and therefore, we have x is x is less than or equal to absolute value of x and negative of x is also less than or equal to absolute value of x and uh, thus uh, we, we have here f of x is less than or equal to absolute value of f of x and that is written as absolute value of f absolute value in short it is written as absolute value of f and this is uh, for all x belongs to the interval a to b and therefore, we can consider the earlier corollary. So, by uh, above corollary. So, what is relation between f and uh, absolute value of f? f is less than or equal to absolute value of f. So, integral of f will be less than or equal to 
absolute value of f and by corollary one we have integral a to b of f is less than or equal to integral a to b of absolute value of f see taking the these two terms f is less than or equal to absolute value of f and therefore integral of f is less than or equal to integral of absolute value of f and we shall assume this as the result one next we have see negative of f of x is less than or equal to absolute value of f of x this is by definition of absolute value function and uh, positive f of x is less than or equal to absolute value of f negative f of x is also less than or equal to absolute value of f which we write as absolute value of a f of x and this happens for all for all x belongs to the closed bounded interval a b and therefore what this implies by the same corollary therefore we have or this uh, implies this implies integral of f from a to b is less than or equal to integral of a to b of absolute value of f and this uh, uh, see in taking integral on this side the relation is less than or equal to this is corollary one and by corollary again by the same corollary so uh, we can write this as that is negative sign can be written outside the integral integral negative integral a to b of f is less than or equal to integral a to b of absolute value of f and we suppose this as second now see one and two so we have the integral f is less than or equal to integral of mod of f or absolute value of f and uh, negative of the integral is also less than or equal to integral of absolute value of f and thus these two together we will imply uh, this this value or that means uh, integral f or negative of integral f both are less than or equal to integral of mod of f and that means the absolute value of f absolute value positive or negative value is less than or equal to the right side either positive value or negative value is less than or equal to the right side means the absolute value of the left side the absolute value of the left side implies a less than or equal to the right side so from 1 and 2 this is by definition of uh, absolute value function the absolute value of integral a to b of f is less than or equal to integral a to b of absolute value of f because absolute value is either positive or negative so this is positive and this is negative means its absolute value is always a less than or equal to the right side value that is integral a to b of uh, mod f or absolute value of f and this proves the result so thus uh, we have proved uh, here a lemma and two corollaries in this lecture uh, relating to the riemann integral functions thank you for watching the lecture